Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today, I hope you're all doing well. This is my Reading the New Testament in 44 Days project, we are on day 21. Today we'll be reading from Acts chapters 4 through 8. So, let's just jump right in. I am excited to be in Acts, I can't wait to get to all the epistles. I really like the epistles, so. Acts 4 verse 1. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. Being grieved that they just taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead, they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about five thousand. Wow. It came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes, and Ananas the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John and Alexander, as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or what name have ye done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole? Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commended them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all that dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people that has straightly threatened them, that they speak henceforth to no man in his name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had heard further threaten them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people, for all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above forty years old, on whom this miracle of healing was shewed. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against the holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. When they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. I like that. Boldness. I think we all need that today, you know, more, now more than ever to have boldness to speak about God and to stand up for what's right and stand up to basically all the evil that's going on in the world and all the sin. We need to stand up for what's right and have boldness. So every day I pray for boldness to reach out to people, to have more boldness for God. Acts 4.32, And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common, 
And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Bar Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. Acts 5, verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession, and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and bought a certain part, and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And a great fear came upon them all that heard these things. Wow. I forgot about that. Well, I didn't forget, but... Wow, I forgot how... That, uh, this important part. That's just, wow. <laughs> he gave up, he died. He gave up the ghost. Just fell down and died. That's just insane. And the young man arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in, and Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and came, and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. Wow. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And the rest durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and lay them on beds and couches that the least of the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. And the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in a common prison, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with them, and called the council together and all the senate, the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, the prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keepers stand without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set then before the council and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us? Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Wow, yeah. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree, him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. And they heard that they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Then stood there up one in the council of Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people, and command to put the apostles for a little space, and said unto them, 
Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thirtius, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him, he also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone, for if this counsel or work be of men, it will come to naught, but if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the penance presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach, not to teach and preach Jesus good. I like that part. We do what God says, not what man says. Amen to that. Acts 6 verse 1 And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of aggressions against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint of this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word, and the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a prolocyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples greatly multiplied multiplied in Jerusalem greatly and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith and Stephen full of faith and power did great wonders and miracles among the people and there arose certain of the synagogue which is called the synagogue of the libertines and Christ, you know, Cyrians and Alexandrians and of them of Sicilia and of Asia disputing with Stephen and as they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake they then they subjoined, subjoined men which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stood up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and law. We have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council looking steadfastly on him saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. And Acts 7. Then said the high priest, Are these things so? And he said, Men, brethren, fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Charon, and said unto him, Get thee out from thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall shew thee. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Charon, and from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein ye now dwell, and he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set foot on, yet he promised that he would give it to him for possession and to his seed after him, when as yet he had no child. And God spake on this wise, that the seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil four hundred years, and the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God, and after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. And he gave them the covenant of circumcision, so Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into, into Egypt, but God was with him, and delivered him out of all his afflictions, and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Chanan, and great affliction, and our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that this was, that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And at the second time Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known to Pharaoh. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him, and all his kindred, three score and fifteen souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died, and he and our fathers. 
and were carried over into Sychem, and laid in the sepulchre that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Emor, the father of Sychem. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, till another king arose which knew not Joseph. The same dealt subtly with our kindred, and evil entreated our fathers, so that they cast out their young children, to the end they might not live. In which time Moses was born, and was exceeding fair, and nourished up in his father's house three months. But when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and deeds. When he was full forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brother and the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. For he was supposed his brother would have understood how that holy, how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto the, them as they strove, and would have set them at one against, saying, Sirs, are you brethren? Why do you wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, who made thee a ruler and judge over us? Wilt thou kill me as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Midian, where he begat two sons. And when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and he, as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The Moses trembled and durst not behold. Then said the Lord unto him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people which is in Egypt. I have heard their groaning, and I am come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, who made thee ruler and judge? The same did God send to be a ruler. And to deliver by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out, after that he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea, and in the wilderness forty years. Wow, uh, just imagine, he was eighty. If I'm doing the math right, he was eighty when he uh, brought the, uh, delivered the, uh, the children of Israel from the Egyptians, and then another forty years passed while he was they were wandering the the desert. Wow, can you imagine being eighty and going on a journey through the desert for another forty years? This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, Prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us, to whom our fathers would not obey, but thirst, thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt, saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us, for as this Moses which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And they made a calf in those days, and offered sacrifice unto the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the, whole, the host of heaven, as are in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel. Have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your God Repham, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drave out before the face of our fathers unto those days of David, who found favor before God and desired to find tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house, Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in the temples made with hands, as saith the prophet, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye always do resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. 
Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them which stood before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it? When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly to heaven, and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Wow. Can you imagine seeing that? Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet whose name was Saul. Enter Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Wow. Can you imagine, you know, being stoned? Or, you know, someone's beating you up or... Uh, Someone's in the process of killing you, and you're saying there, you're saying and thinking during this process, you know, have compassion on them, you know, forgive them. Can you imagine saying that while you're being stoned or while you're being, you know, beaten? Not thinking of them themselves, you know, them doing it as, as a person, but, you know, in general. I can't even imagine that, but he did. As he was dying. Amazing. Acts 8 verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time there was great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. Except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church entering into every house and hail Calling men and women committeth them to prison. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere, preaching the word. And Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies and, and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city, but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, given out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard because of that long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women, then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip, and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands of the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that whomsoever I lay hands on he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said to him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of thy wickedness. And pray, God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in bound of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, 
a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go near and join thyself to his chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb done before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, who shall declare his, this generation, for his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet of this, of himself or of some other man? And Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And then when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through he preached in all the cities, till he came to Caesarea. Wow. Can you imagine just seeing, you know, someone in front of you and then being, you know, then then not, just boom, gone? Wow. But uh I just want to point out this verse right here, Acts eight thirty seven. You're not gonna find in most new versions of the Bible. They they cut out this verse. And it's sad that uh, they're chopping up the word of God. Like, look look in your Bible, if you have a newer Bible version, translation, this is not in there. I have an NIV for reference, and it's not in there. Many other new versions of the Bible are in there. It's not in there. And uh, there's lots of stuff on the Trinity that's not in the Bible, that's cut out from these new versions. And it just makes you wonder why they're cutting out these specific verses. So just be careful, and no matter what version of the Bible you have, pray that the Lord will show you the truth and help you to understand his word, no matter what. So thanks guys so much for watching and listening. I hope you all have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. And as always, TTFN, ta, ta for now. Take care, God bless. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Trust in him. You'll never be sorry. We'll see you tomorrow with more acts. Take care. Bye-bye.